Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will cover how strength and conditioning training can be periodized for field sport athletes using a vertical integration approach. Let's first establish what training qualities are important for field sport athletes to train. Most field sport athletes can benefit from implementing the following training methods. Unloaded sprint training, resisted sprint training, plyometric training, power training, maximal strength training, and general strength. Field sport athletes can also benefit from change of direction training and endurance work, but these qualities will already be trained during sport practice and competitive matches, so we don't necessarily need to train them separately in strength and conditioning sessions. So as we can see, field sport athletes require multiple qualities to be trained simultaneously to be physically prepared for competitive matches. This brings us to the concept of vertical integration. This is the concept of training all relevant qualities simultaneously, while the emphasis of each quality shifts over time. So rather than only training one quality per mesocycle, we are actually training all qualities all year round. This approach may suit field sport athletes better because they need to perform multiple different athletic movements for their sport and they need to be in good condition for an entire season. With the vertical integration approach, athletes will never be completely out of shape for their sport and can adjust training based on when they need to peak. Let's now explore how each quality can be periodized over time. When periodizing any form of training for athletic performance, we want to use the most specific training methods closer to when we need to peak and more general training methods further from this peak. The general training methods should potentiate the more specific training, meaning that they will provide a foundation that will enhance the more specific training methods. Let's now cover each quality and how they can be periodized from a further to closer proximity to their peak. Unloaded sprint training can be periodized by using shorter distances further from the athlete's peak and longer distances closer to their peak. The distance implemented will influence the speed that the athlete reaches. The longer the distance, the faster speed the athlete will reach. We want to limit speed initially and gradually allow the athlete to reach faster velocities so that they slowly acclimate to the demands of max velocity sprinting. If we allow them to reach top speeds immediately, the athlete is at a high risk of injury. Resisted sprint training can be periodized by using higher resistances with shorter distances further from their peak and lower resistances with longer distances closer to their peak. Higher resistances will require higher muscular force to be produced with slower running speeds, which can build a foundation of sprint-specific muscular strength. Lighter resistances allow faster running speeds and require force to be produced in shorter timeframes, making it more specific to unloaded sprinting and likely having higher transfer. Plyometric training can be periodized by using exercises with longer ground contact times further from the athlete's peak and exercises with shorter ground contact times closer to their peak. Exercises with longer contact times will involve higher muscular forces with a slower stretch shortening cycle, which can build a foundation of muscular strength. Exercises with shorter ground contact times require force to be produced in very short time frames with a fast stretch shortening cycle, which is generally more specific to athletic movements seen on a sports field. Power training can be periodized by using heavier loads further from the athlete's peak and lighter loads closer to their peak. Heavier loads involve higher muscular force produced in longer time frames, which can again build a foundation of muscular strength. Lighter loads require faster movement velocities, which is more specific to athletic movements seen on the sports field. Maximal strength training can be periodized by using higher rep ranges with lighter loads further from the athlete's peak and lower rep ranges with heavier loads closer to their peak. High rep ranges will emphasize muscular growth, which will build a structural foundation of the muscles. Lower rep ranges will allow heavier loads to be lifted to maximize absolute force output. And general strength training can be periodized by using higher volumes in the form of a higher number of sets per muscle group per week, further from the athlete's peak, and lower volumes closer to their peak. Higher volumes will generally provide greater muscle hypertrophy, but also induce more local and systemic fatigue. Lower volumes should be adequate to maintain muscle mass and dissipate accumulated fatigue, leaving the athlete in a fresh state. So how may this practically look in a strength and conditioning program? Let's go through some general examples to see how these qualities can be programmed and periodized at different times of the year. Let's first have a look at how a four week training program may look early in the preparation period of the year. This is a time when the athlete is quite far from when they need to be in peak condition, so more general training methods will be implemented to build a foundation that can be capitalized on later in the year. This is most likely to be in an off season or an early preseason period of the year. For this program, we will simply use two training sessions per week, 
One will be a field-based session and one will be a gym session. Unloaded sprints, resisted sprints and plyometrics are performed on the field session and power, max strength and general strength are performed in the gym. As we can see here, the unloaded sprints use a short distance of 15 meters as the athlete hasn't been acclimated to max velocity sprinting yet. Resisted sprints use the sled pull as an exercise for 10 meters with a heavy load. The heavy load is relative to the athlete's strength and the surface they are running on. For plyometrics, we have implemented repeated vertical jumps using an additional load in the form of a five kilo weight vest. Here, the athlete is aiming for maximal height with each jump. For the gym sessions, the power exercise that has been implemented is the trap bar jump. This will be performed with a heavy load, which again will be relative to the athlete's strength. The box squat has been chosen as a maximal strength exercise and is performed with a higher rep range of six to eight. For general strength, pull-ups, stiff leg deadlifts, and the dumbbell bench press have been implemented. A fairly high volume of four sets each in the eight to 15 rep range has been prescribed. We can also see here that the first week of the mesocycle starts with a lower volume than the following three weeks to act as a deload. This helps to dissipate accumulated fatigue from the previous mesocycle, allowing each mesocycle to start in a fairly fresh state. Let's now explore how this same program structure may look later in the training year. This period of time is when the athlete needs to be in a better condition, but not at the absolute peak. This may be a time later in the preseason when the athlete needs to start getting into good condition or during the season, since we cannot be in peak condition for the entire in-season period. As we can see here, the basic structure is exactly the same. However, each quality will be programmed in a slightly different way. Unloaded sprint training uses a distance of 25 meters in this mesocycle, allowing the athlete to reach slightly faster speeds. Resisted sprint training uses the sled pulls once again, but the distance has increased to 15 meters and the load used is now moderate rather than heavy. Repeated vertical jumps are implemented again for a plyometric exercise, this time without any load. The focus here is to still maximize jump height, which means that ground contact times will still be fairly long. The trap bar jump has remained as the power exercise, but now uses a moderate load, meaning that force must be produced in faster timeframes. The box squat remains as the max strength lift, and now uses a rep range of three to five, which will allow heavier loads to be lifted. And the general strength exercises only use a volume of three sets each rather than four. And lastly, let's now explore how this mesocycle may look during a peaking period. This is a time when the athlete aims to be in peak physical condition for their sport, so the most specific and transferable training methods are used. This could be at times during the season when the team has important competitive matches or when they need to feel fresh for a congested bunch of games. Once again, the basic structure is the same, but the emphasis of each quality will be slightly different. For unloaded sprints, a distance of 35 meters has been used. This will allow athletes to just reach around max velocity sprint speed. The sled pulls now use a distance of 20 meters with a light load. And the repeated vertical jumps use no load once again, but now the goal is to jump as high as possible while minimizing ground contact time. So the athlete will land with stiffer joints and the stretch shortening cycle will be much faster. For the trap bar jump, a light load has been used to allow faster movement velocity. The box squat uses a rep range of one to three to allow maximal loads to be lifted and the highest forces to be produced. And the general strength exercises only use a volume of two sets to maintain muscle mass while avoiding incurring excessive fatigue. Now that we have established how different qualities can be adjusted based on the time of year, let's now create an annual plan for a field sport athlete. As we can see here in this example, we have a basic annual plan with the fixtures for the season already filled out. The darker boxes indicate more important matches where athletes need to be in better physical condition and the lighter boxes indicate less important competitive fixtures. We can now break the year up into the off-season, pre-season and in-season periods based on these fixtures. As we can see here, the athletes have an eight-week off-season after the regular season, a 12-week pre-season and then the in-season period runs from late March to early October. The first four weeks of the off-season will involve no specific training to give the athletes time to mentally and physically recover from the tough season. Next, we have our peaking index. This is a rough guide which helps us get a general gauge on what condition we expect the athletes to be in at what time of the year. As we can see here, we generally want the athlete to be in the best condition throughout the in-season period, and we don't expect them to be in great condition in the off-season and early pre-season. Now we can roughly plan out each training quality so we know what form of training we will perform at any given time of the year. For unloaded sprint training, we have implemented shorter distances in the off season, which gradually increase to moderate and then long distances as we approach the season. 
Then a bout of short distance sprints has been implemented again to not lose any general training qualities before progressing to longer distances towards the end of the season when the athlete needs to be in absolute peak condition. Resisted sprints follow a similar trend. Heavier loads have been used further from the athlete's peak and lighter loads closer to their peak. Plyometrics use longer ground contact times further from the athlete's peak and shorter contact times closer to their peak. Power training uses heavier loads further from their peak and lighter loads closer to the peak. Max strength uses higher rep ranges further from their peak and lower rep ranges closer to their peak. And general strength training uses higher volumes further from the athlete's peak and lower volumes closer to their peak. So at any given time of the year, a mesocycle can be created following these rough guidelines. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.